Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of the Jack and Bill Show. As you can see, Jack's not here. So today's the Bill Show. I do want to uh, wish my, my buddy Jack uh, safe travels as he's driving back to Shreveport from South Carolina. Um, I'll take it over today. What I want to talk about today are some of the newsworthy items of the week. We have seen some volatility in the markets this week. We have seen very little volatility in stocks in recent months, but today has certainly changed things. Uh, in fact, this week was probably the most volatile week in the stock market for the year. Well, these are the two no noteworthy news items that I will briefly discuss today. The first is the Fed funds rate. Uh, this is the short-term rate set by the Federal Reserve Bank. And the Fed made a decision this week and announced that they would cut the Fed funds rate 25 basis points to a range of 2 to 2.25%. Two a uh, basis point is one hundredth of 1%, so a 25 basis point cut is one quarter of one percentage point. So now we are in this range, 2 to 2.25%. Two well, I want to give you some perspective historically on what that looks like. So if we go to this graph, you can see here, back in 1981, the Fed funds rate was as high as 20%. Now, bear in mind, this was after a, a very rough inflationary period in the United States. Our older viewers would remember this. Uh, the Fed hiked the Fed funds rate to try to break the back of inflation. And it, it worked. It was very effective. And then after they broke the back of inflation, they began the process of cutting the Fed funds rate, normalizing it. And this process occurred over decades. Now, as recently as 2007, the funds, Fed funds rate was five and a quarter percent. This was just prior to the credit crisis. So remember that, five and a quarter percent, we could say that's more of a normalized rate for the federal, federal funds rate. During the credit crisis, to spur economic growth, the Federal Reserve took that rate from five and a quarter down to zero in 2008. Zero. Held the rate there at zero, effectively, from 2008 through the end of 2015. So what that meant was cheap, money, lots of liquidity all through this time. And there's lots of debate over whether the Fed held that rate too low for too long. I would agree that they did. Well, towards the end of 2015, the Fed took the rate up, started tightening Fed monetary policy by raising the Fed funds rate. We got to 2.5%. Now, you can rec recall that the president has been a vocal critic of the Fed for raising rates in the fall of last year. Well, we got to two and a half, and now we're coming back down again. And as we've discussed in, in past episodes, it is a little confounding that if our economy is so strong, then why are we lowering rates? Shouldn't we be raising rates to thwart inflationary risk? Well, there were, there were some interesting changes to the language that came out of the Fed when they announced the Fed funds cut. One of the things they said, or they referred to, global developments. Global, okay? So now we're looking outside of the U.S. The other is muted inflation. So what this tells us is that the Fed is concerned not just with the economy domestically, but the Fed is looking at the global economy. And we know that globally, the economy is slowing down. And we know that many of our uh, large trading partners in Europe and Asia have been uh, easing. They've been pumping monetary stimulus into their economies because their economies are slowing. But this is a, is a problem. In spite of the cheap and plentiful liquidity that we've had all these years, 
we cannot get inflation. Something is going on behind the scenes that's keeping inflation at bay. So the Fed is working very hard to get us to a healthy level of inflation. Because the opposite is, if we don't have any inflation, we could end up in disinflation or actual deflation, which is very problematic. So we've had cheap money. It's been good for borrowers. It's been a negative for savers. So borrowers would include corporations. Corporations have been able to borrow very inexpensively. The Fed funds rate is a reference rate that's used to set other short-term lending rates, like the prime rate, um, LIBOR, other short-term borrowing rates that uh, businesses uh, borrow money at. So businesses have been able to borrow plenty of money. Retirees are paying the price. They are not making good returns on their savings at the bank. CD yields are very low. Well, how did the market react to that? Um, you would think that the stock market would respond very favorably to a cut in the Fed funds rate because it does reduce borrowing costs for businesses and it does provide additional liquidity. So there's a lot of money out there chasing too few investments, really. And so that's providing a lift to all investments. Well, the market didn't like this. The market threw a little bit of a temper tantrum. The stock market was hoping for 50 basis points in cuts, not 25. The other thing that the market was looking for was an indication that the Fed was changing the trajectory from tightening to loosening. And the Fed did not provide that. The Fed basically said that this was a mid-cycle one-off. So we may not be heading on a downward trajectory of the Fed funds rate. Well, what happened next? Tariffs. So the president announced additional tariffs on China. A 10% tariff on an additional $300 billion starting September the 1st. Now this is on top of an existing 25% tariff on about $250 billion in imported goods. There are conflicting considerations here. Certainly we, we want to look at the impact of tariffs on trade and business, but there's also national security concerns. And our national security concerns, in this case, may trump, no pun intended, international trade and, and business. The other thing is the timing. Uh, the impact of tariffs in the short run and the long run can be very different. In the short run, the impact of tariffs is a big negative. So I'm going to give this a sad face. And actually going back to Fed funds, I'll give that a neutral, neutral face for Fed funds cut. Now, short term there is pain. Long term, you know, this could help the United States in negotiating a more favorable trading arrangement with our trading partners, notably China. I do want to point out, in spite of what the President has said, tariffs are paid by importers and consumers. I'm going to give the President a Pinocchio nose. He gets a Pinocchio for saying that China pays for tariffs. No. Companies in the U.S. that import goods and services from China pay the tariffs, and then it's up to those companies to decide whether they will eat those additional costs or pass them to consumers. And I'm going to show you how that works. If we look at a simple income statement, and an income statement, quite simply, is revenues minus expenses equals profits. And we can break that out into a little more detail. So revenues or sales minus costs of goods sold equals gross profit. So for a U.S. company, let's say Walmart, for example. Let's say Walmart is importing clothing, and they do a lot of that, clothing from China. 
a tariff on imported clothing from China would increase costs of goods sold, which would decrease gross profits. That's not good for investors in Walmart stock. So what can Walmart do? Well, they can eat that and accept lower profit margins. The alternative is they could offset higher costs of goods sold by increasing pricing. That's how tariffs get passed along to the consumer. So in this example, Walmart is paying more for imported clothing items, costs of goods sold. They tack that tariff onto the sales price. So they maintain their gross profit margin. And it's a wash for investors. That's what we don't know at this point. Will U.S. importers eat these additional costs or really pass them along? If they eat them, it will have an impact on the bottom line. Lower profit margins, lower earnings, and lower stock prices. I'm just keeping this very simple. If they do pass these costs along to the consumer, they can maintain their margins, maintain their earnings. It's the consumer that takes the hit. And at some point, and we don't know, at some point it may affect consumer buying habits. At the margin, there are people who cannot afford to pay markups on items at large retailers. They don't have that discretionary income to do that. Some, some of us can't, but there are a lot of consumers out there that don't have that additional income. And so it may mean they have to make a decision not to make that clothing purchase or whatever the case may be. But these are two big issues going on right now in the markets. Um, it's been a negative for stocks. Um, the, stock, the stock market, broadly speaking, has sold off this week. It's been a positive for bonds because there's been a flight to quality out of risk assets such as stocks into high quality bonds. And so we have seen yields on bonds go lower as a result. So we're watching all of this. Um, I'm just going to give all of this on balance. A sad face. But it is Friday, so we can end on this note. A happy face. Thank God it's Friday. And we wish you all a wonderful weekend. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.